Corporate greed annoys me big time, and it seems to be all too common nowadays. One of my favorite plugins of all time is called Dehancer. It is a great film emulation plugin. I have a lesson dedicated to it in my color grading masterclass, but they, like many other companies nowadays, have jacked up their prices a crazy amount, and they're making the switch to get us on a subscription model so they can own our art and laugh their way to the bank. If you're looking for a film emulation plugin, I highly recommend not buying Dehancer, and that's because you don't need to anymore. Two awesome German creators, Christian May Grab and Eric Lenz, put their minds together and with a little German innovation, created a plugin called Emulate. They may call it Emulate, but I like to call it the Dehancer killer because it's not a subscription, it is one fifth the price of Dehancer and it works just as well as Dehancer on your footage to get that cinematic. Was that cringe? I think that was a bit cringe. I'm gonna leave it in. So let me run through typically how you might use this plugin. Eric wants me to point out, this is not a color grading plugin. It's more of a finishing plugin, a way to make your color grade, your footage look more cinematic, dare I say. However, he really underplays how great the looks are in Emulate because frankly, in a lot of the examples you saw, I didn't do a lot of color grading, maybe just some minor tweaking, some small adjustments. Most of the looks were from this plugin. So we have this sequence of this ballet dancer here, and we're gonna go through the process of using Emulate from start to finish, specifically if you are grading footage with the same camera. If you are grading footage that was shot on different cameras, I suggest watching the Emulate tutorial that I think is on Eric's channel. It also is available once you purchase the plugin. So you can find Emulate just by going to your effects browser. And little fun fact, if you just click on one of these, it doesn't even have to be all, it could be any one of these and just press the E key or whatever is the starting letter to what you're looking for, it'll take you right to it. So this is the one basically you're gonna use most of the time. These are presets pre-made presets that are already set up for you. This is Christian's preset and this is Eric's studio preset. But typically, just for the general plugin, you would use this tab. This may look confusing, don't worry, it's pretty simple. Usually you're not gonna use these individually, but you might, but for now, just skip these. This, this one to the left, you're gonna to apply to your clips. So you would just select your clips and you will double click that. You can see it just says clip here, so you know what to do there. And if we open up the inspector window, we have applied essentially an order of operations for the color grading process for all of your clips, which is pretty nice. It's not like this does anything. You still have to go through the process of adjusting your contrast, color balancing your shot, maybe adding a little bit of a tweak here and there, but it's just a nice thing that was added to kind of speed up the process for you so you know what you're doing. These are just your standard color wheels in Final Cut Pro, but it's set up so that you have a good reference of the order of operations that you should go in. But but if these are too much, you don't even need them. In fact, you don't even need this unless you have different footage from different cameras. And that's where this comes into play. But I'm not going to go over that in this tutorial. That's something that is on Eric's channel. For now, we're just focused on creating a video with footage from the same camera. So the next step would be to press Option A. This is our new shortcut in Fonica Pro to add an adjustment layer, or as we like to call it, an adjustment clip. And all you're gonna do is select this adjustment clip, and you're gonna go to this look development preset and double click to apply that. Now, if you don't know what an adjustment clip does, anything you apply to this will affect everything underneath. And then the first thing you would do, what I've been doing, is turning off these different windows that we have. So automatically it applies density, which actually doesn't do anything unless you make the adjustments in here. The look designer, this is the big window that we're gonna make a lot of adjustments on. And then you have bloom, halation, and grain. These are automatically applied. So what I like to do is just turn these off initially and then hop into the look designer. And with log footage, you're just gonna do a Rex 709 conversion, but I would recommend using the looks that are in Emulate because they are truly fantastic. Eric did a fantastic job. Christian, I'm sure, worked on it too. If not, he looked over Eric's shoulder. They said some German things and uh, continued chugging along and making this great plugin. So you would choose the camera that the footage was shot with. This was shot with red. So they did a great job of including just about every camera system. So we have red, then you go to the looks, 
Find the Look tab, and you have two options here, Neutral Exposure and ETTR. This is exposed to the right. Typically, if you're shooting in log, not always, but sometimes you want to kind of overexpose just a tad. Move that waveform on your histogram just slightly to the right when you're shooting. That way, you get a cleaner image, but uh, it's not always the case. For this instance, I think we're just going to stick with a Neutral Exposure, and let's just pick the first one for now. But well, we're just going to be using this as a template for now and then kind of look through the different options that we have because as we scrub through this sequence, we have shots of different exposure, different brightness, different contrast, some that need color balancing like this one. And so we want to make these uniform so that when we have the look applied, it's looking clean and nice. And right now it's not. Obviously, we have some adjustments to do. So let's find something. I like the exposure of this as well as the color of this for the most part. So this will be our reference. So something we can do is press Control Command and 6 to bring up our comparison viewer. And then we're going to hit Save Frame here. And you can save, I think, up to, is it 20? I feel, oh, sorry, 30 frames. That way you can do a little side by side as far as color grading. And this is something I go over in my color grading masterclass as well, which I will link below. But let's start with this first clip here. Let's head into Exposure and Contrast because this is obviously way too bright. We want to match this as best as possible. And something I'm noticing is just by bringing down our global exposure slider, we are crushing our blacks. So I almost want to just bring up our blacks here and then bring down the overall exposure just a bit more. And I like the way our blacks are sitting in this position. Obviously, the color balance is not correct, but for the most part, contrast is okay. Maybe we could try even bumping up our highlights just a bit. And that's fine for now. Let's hop into color balance and let's pull up our video scopes. So view, video scopes, we got the vector scope up and view, video scopes here. This shows the hue and saturation of your image and our trace is not looking even. Obviously the whole trace is swinging more towards blue and cyan. So we just take our global hue slider which affects the whole image and we're going to push this away from the blue here. And that's, I mean, you could warm it if you wanted it to be a little bit more natural, but I'm trying to get it somewhat even. So I think right about there, I don't want to spend too much time on this. We'll just leave that as is, and that looks fine. Move on to the next clip, and we have this one. So let's start with exposure and contrast. I actually think the global exposure is fine. Maybe just bring down our shadows. And I like having slightly milkier shadows here because the light is directly on the camera. I think that looks natural. We just need to adjust our color balance. So we'll hop into balance and we'll just make a slight push in our global hue slider. So pushing away from the blue and I'm just kind of ping ponging my eyes on the viewport as well as the vector scope. So I'm looking right here. This is her skin. This is the skin tone line. For this sequence, I want accurate skin. And this is also her skin right here. So it's looking fine. The hue of the blue is matched up pretty well. And maybe I'll even hop back into the exposure and contrast, pull down our midtones just to get it a bit moodier. And I think that looks okay for this sequence. You know what, actually? Let me just hop in. I want to go into the shadows and just push slightly away from the blue. So add more green. That's creating more of this cyan look. I think that's matching a lot better. Let's hop to this shot. We'll go back to exposure and contrast. And this shot is way too bright. Luckily, with log footage, and specifically when grading before the Rec. 709 conversion, we're able to get a lot of that detail back. So just by bringing down our exposure, look at how that's bringing back the detail in our highlights here. And if I double click to reset this, here is before and here is after. So we, uh, we don't want to crush our shadows too much. Doesn't really matter if we crush these. I'm not I want her skin to be the focus, but maybe even pull up the shadows, slightly pull down the exposure of the midtones to add that contrast back in. And for this, we should be pulling up our Luma waveform, which measures brightness, helps us to adjust our brightness levels. And I think that's okay. That matches fine. Now a little color balancing. So we'll hop into balance and head back to vector scope for both of these scopes. We'll go to the global hue slider and I'm just going to push in this direction and look how well that pushes our skin back on the skin tone line. Now, if you're wondering why I did that, basically I'm looking at the shot initially and saying that's too blue. Looking at the reference shot, that's what it should look like or what we're going for. So 
you take the hue slider, you push away from that color. And the reason I'm doing the global hue slider is I find it works the best as far as fixing an overall color imbalance. So if I'm taking the hue slider, and another fun tip is if you hold the option key, it'll make a nice slow adjustment here. So if I don't hold it, it's quick. If I do hold the option key, nice and slow. So we're gonna get that online and I'm looking at the blue or the cyan that's showing up in these uh, mid-tones as well as in this shot as the reference frame to just try and dial this in. And I think that's really good. Now I didn't adjust the saturation on any of these because frankly, I think we're fine as is. But let's finish up with this last shot. And this one almost has some magenta in her skin. This may be a little bit trickier. I think I want to bring up our global exposure, our overall brightness of our image, bring down the shadows, we'll scrub through, make sure it's looking fine. We're not crushing anything, blowing anything out. And I think that's solid. Hop into our balance. We're going to go to our global hue slider. And I'm going to push away from the blue and magenta just slightly. We're going to add, I'm for now looking at the color of this wall and try and match that as best as possible. Actually, that did a good job of bringing her skin online, but not fully. So, since skin tones lie in the midtones, let's see if we can get there with our midtones hue slider. So, I'm just going to take this and push in the direction of, sorry, push away from the blue. So, I'm pushing towards orange, which is what skin tone usually is in this direction. Just kind of lining that up, and that looks Real good, although too saturated, a bit too saturated. So we could hop into the skin one, which Eric and Christian have so greatly added. Just go to hue versus sat. So let's adjust the intensity of color and whatever color you'd like. I just selected the skin using the picker and we're gonna pull down on the skin just a bit more. I like that, I think that looks real nice. So we have everything other than this shot, but this is a different environment, but I think we did an okay job. The OCD in me wants to work on this shot more, but we don't have time and you guys would probably like get to it already, Dylan. And if we scrub through, that's looking real pretty. Now here's a really useful trick for you. If we go ahead and press option Y on this top adjustment clip, which has the look designer, right? This is the right one. This is the one you use on the adjustment clip or the one they suggest you use on the adjustment clip. So option Y, it will audition this clip. Consider this like a tryout. So we just made a tr one tryout. Now we're on a different one. So then we can go to 16 mil, neutral exposure, Centuria, option Y. We can go to CMG 2016. Then again, option Y. Okay, I sped that up so you wouldn't have to see all that. So then once you do that, option Y is basically copying it, right? So if I double click this little icon, you can see what we got going on here. If I scrub through, it then goes through all the different looks. But a faster way to go about doing this is by holding control and option and just hitting the left or right arrow key. So this is pretty cool, huh? And something that's so great, I don't know how, but Eric made it so that once you set your exposure correctly on the clip level, these different LUTs aren't going to adjust the exposure of your look. So you know how you add some LUTs and it's radically too dark or way too bright based on the different LUTs you're adding. What he's saying is this doesn't do that. And it doesn't do that. It keeps the exposure the same, which is so cool. So control option, left arrow. I mean, it just look how pretty these looks are. Okay. That's obviously, which one is this? 16 mil, that's pushed a lot. So if you wanted a real strong teal and orange look, you got that one at the, the 16 mil. Also one that I'm a big fan of is Fincher, but I'm not sure that's gonna look the best for this. It's very like dark and gritty. And I mean, just think of David Fincher films, but let's, let's go with this real punchy look. So we'll go with 16 mil here and you have density. We're not gonna be using density for this shot, but it is just a way that you can adjust your saturation levels or the intensity of color in your shot in a more filmic and appealing way. So instead of increasing the intensity of a certain color, which typically digitally will make it brighter and not as appealing, this makes it richer using density. So we're not gonna be using that for now. Instead, let's just roll through the rest of this. So you have your basic exposure. If you want to bring up the exposure of your shot, if you want to adjust the contrast, you can. And remember, 
since this is on an adjustment clip, it's going to be affecting your whole shot. But actually, I'm not going to adjust any of these because I like the way the look looks. And we already went through and added our different contrasts and stuff. But just know this is temperature, tint, all your basic color correction type sliders. And we'll head down to film compression. Film compression compresses the highlights, makes them a bit dimmer, very filmic, very nice looking in my opinion. It's something that I use a lot in my videos. So if we just crank this and we look at the windows in the top left, you'll notice it is kind of flattening out our highlights and making it look less digital. So maybe we'll try this shot and just turn this off and on. And let's try adjusting the brightness and just playing with these different sliders. White point is gonna make everything a bit brighter and we could try even ping pong in these. Okay, so I like the way that looks. And we'll just look through the entire sequence. Everything's looking fine. You have vignette, which I'm very glad they added, especially because the vignette in Final Cut Pro is garbage. So this vignette, which you probably didn't even notice that this is on, look how subtle and pretty. So if I just crank the amount a lot, it's just nice. It's not in your face. It's just what you want with the vignette. So I'm very glad they made it like this, although that's too much, but you get the point. We want something that's subtle and soft. Up next in the order operations that they added when you click on the look development, you have Bloom. Bloom is a way to add a nice glow around the very brightest parts of your image. Very common if you have a mist filter on your lens, which I have on all my lenses. Right now I have a one fourth mist filter on and then that stays on all the time. I never take off mist filters. So you can adjust the different intensities, the different stops of uh, mist. If you want one eighth, which is a nice solid amount, not too much, not too little, you can add that. Let's go to a different shot here. Try something like this. This is probably a good shot to do a little test on. And maybe even we switch it to one fourth. The threshold is what is selected, I believe. I keep getting these two mixed up, the threshold and source limiter. So I'm not gonna try and explain it, but what I have been doing is just ping pong in these back and forth. So obviously that's adjusting things too much. So something right about there is fine. Can adjust the impact, the amount, which maybe if we want something very noticeable, we can have that. We just gotta make sure it's not affecting skin at all or making adjustments that we don't want. And that's fine. We'll go for a lot in this look. You can add what they call pollution, which just extends to the rest of the shot. I would kind of leave this on zero. And you have hue, which will change the color. To the left, I think will be cooler. To the right, it'll be a little warmer. We may as well try that. And then you have halation. This is, I think, something that occurs naturally in the film process that uh, adds like a glowing red line around contrasty edges and is very common nowadays. Something that they added, which I like, is a mask mode so we can see what we're doing. So the strength, you have standard, bold, nuclear. I actually haven't even tried that. And then you would adjust the threshold. My, if you want my advice, which you may not want, that's fine, let me just give it, is move the threshold so only the very brightest things are selected and then just kind of find the right amount for the source limiter. And if we turn that off, look at that, that's pretty. I like that, me likey. Scrub through, make sure it's not affecting anything negatively in our sequence. And that's fine. I think that looks pretty good. And then the last thing is grain. You may hate grain. You may love grain. But now you have grain because grain is in this plugin. So what I like to do, this is just my opinion. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I like to make the film resolution nice and sharp, but still have the grain visible. So I swing this all to the right. You adjust the amount. Maybe we'll do a decent amount of grain. And I like to swing the chroma to the left so it's black and white. It's a monochrome grain. And sh look at that, boys and girls. That is nice. Now, if you don't wanna go through this long process that we just went through as far as what we adjusted on here, just hit save effects preset, maybe call it emulate teal and orange look, <laughs> I don't know. And then save it in whatever category you have. I have a custom category made, but you can head down to the bottom, hit new category, and then select it to be in that, and then hit save. But of course, if you have different footage in different scenarios, different locations, it's not always gonna look just like this. So with color grading and like anything in life, if you want it to look good, you gotta take your time on it. And that's a pretty grade. We have accurate looking skin. We have great color separation with the orange of her skin and the cyan of the background, very solid. And best of all, 
we did it really quickly with Emulate. So I highly recommend this plugin. It'll help you to achieve that film look. You'll be supporting independent creators and you'll be saying no to corporate greed. So the link is in the description and thank you so much for watching.